What's up everyone, how's it going? This is Watch, and in this video we'll be doing a direct head-to-head -head specification comparison between the new HTC One M9, this is the brand new flagship phone from HTC that's going to be available in 2015, versus one of the most popular large Android phone that you can get, the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Now this video is specifically targeted for any of you guys that are perhaps are wanting to upgrade your existing smartphones to one of these Android-based smartphones, or to any of you guys who are just curious on seeing what the specification differences are between these two very powerful Android based smartphones. So without any further ado, let's get right into the specification comparisons. Now physically speaking, the Samsung Note 4 will certainly be the larger overall smartphone because it has a larger overall screen size, but not by much. Only a couple of millimeters in terms of height and width. And uh, in terms of thickness itself, it's going to be actually slightly thinner than the M9, measuring about 8.5 millimeters versus about 9.6 millimeters on the uh, new HTC One M9. Now one aspect that the HTC One will certainly trump the Note 4 is certainly build quality. Now the Note 4 is a really one of the best Note series of products made in terms of overall design and a build quality. It has a nice metal band around it, but uh, I think the all metal chassis that you'll get with the M9 is kind of in another league. It's certainly up there with a lot of those high end industrial grade products that you find from Apple and things like that. And uh, I'm sure the M9 will certainly be no exceptions. Now the displays on these two devices are going to be interesting. Basically, we have a 5.7 MOLED screen on the Note 4, which is quite fantastic. It's a quad HD display, so we have a native resolution of 2560 by 1440. It has a PPI count of about 515, which is a higher overall screen density than the full HD screen we find on the M9, and that has a PPI count of about 441. Now, in most instances, I don't think a quad HD display has a huge set of advantages compared to a full HD display and uh, certainly in both cases uh, both phones are justified we do have a larger overall battery on the Note 4 versus we do have an overall smaller screen size on the HTC so that really covers the basis of the disadvantage of a quad HD display that it takes more battery life but when you have a larger battery you compensate for that and uh, the whole reason why you would want a quad HD display is you have a larger overall screen size and with a 5 inch screen I think 1920 by 1080 is perfectly fine but one thing is going to be for sure it's going to be interesting to see the overall color accuracy and rendition of what the displays can actually do in real life and if there'll be any significant differences between the two in terms of overall maximum brightness because traditionally OLED displays are not as bright as LCD displays so we'll see if that notion pans out when we have the new M9 on our hands. Now furthermore one of the cool things about getting any flagship HTC phone is that they typically are paired with really fast fantastic external speakers and this phone will certainly be no exception it'll be paired with uh, dual front facing speakers that we found in last year's m8 and m7 but this time they're going to be using technology that's certified by Dolby. so it's going to be really interesting to see the overall difference between these two when it comes to external speakers but if i were to put my money on it i would definitely say that the m9 will completely wipe the floor compared to the note 4 when it comes to the external speaker quality now continuing forward looking at the internal specification differences between the two even though the note 4 just came out just a few months ago it seems like the technology is moving very quickly when it comes to qualcomm they're using the new snapdragon 810 chip on the m9 which is a comprised of two quad core cpus one is clocked about 1.5 gigahertz the other one clocked about 2 gigahertz now the note 4 is going to be primarily using the snapdragon 805 chip in some parts of the world it's going to use the exynos chip which is an eight core processor but the snapdragon 805 5 chip that most people have in North America is a quad core CPU that's clocking about 2.7 gigahertz and if you take a look at some of the early leak results from Geekbench 3 some people have been already testing out the new A10 chip that's in the HDC1 M9 it's getting about uh, over 1200 points on the single core score and about uh, 3587 on the multi core score which is definitely better than the single and multi core score that I got on my Note 4 now in most cases I don't think there's going to be a big difference 
between the A10 and the 805, certainly when it comes to using these phones on kind of like a regular basis that most people use them for checking email, surfing the web, watching videos. I don't think there's going to be a major benefit from the A10, but one thing is for sure is that it is the latest and greatest CPU. And if you want the fastest, the M9 has that for you. Now, in terms of the graphical performance, we have the latest Adreno 430 <laughs> GPU on the M9 versus we have the Adreno 420, which is also fairly new. Now, most cases, the uh, difference between these two GPUs are going to be negligible but again we'll have to test them in real life to see whether there is any GPU advantages on the 430 compared to the 420. Now in terms of RAM both phones are exactly the same at three gigabytes of RAM so pretty much similar multitasking capabilities there which is pretty cool. Now moving forward we're going to talk about the uh, cameras on both of these two smartphones and taking a look at the front facing camera we're going to have a really fantastic front facing camera on the M9 probably one of the best in any smartphone it's going to have a four megapixel megapixel ultra sensor so it's going to be really fantastic in terms of low light and uh, we're going to have a really great video and photo capability so for the selfie person in mind looks like that m9 is going to do a great job now that being said the no 4 has one of the best front facing cameras available right now in the market 3.7 megapixels with great video capturing capabilities and a really wide viewing angle as well it's going to be interesting to see how they compare in real life but taking a look at the rear facing cameras we have a 20.7 megapixel sensor on the M9, which is a huge departure from last year's uh, camera on the M8, which only had a four megapixel ultra pixel sensor. And they're going down the more is better route of having all those pixels in your stills capability, which is fantastic. We have 60 megapixel stills on the Note 4. Great overall low light performance, delivers great color rendition and overall sharpness. Both cameras in terms of video capturing capabilities are gonna have 4K at 30 frames per second, 1080p at 60 frames per second, and uh, 120 frames per second at 720p. Now, the last thing that we're going to talk about is the overall battery performance on the, these two smartphones. Now, we don't have the M9 in real life to uh, determine the exact everyday average day-to-day -day usage of uh, the, each charge, but uh, basically the uh, Note 4 is one of the best performing smartphones when it comes to battery life. It has a massive 3,220 milliamp hour battery that is fully replaceable and looks like the M9 is also going to have a pretty large battery, about 2900 milliamp hours which is quite a bit more than the uh, 2600 milliamp hour battery that we had on the m8 and that delivered pretty good overall battery performance and because it doesn't have a quad hd display we're going to definitely see pretty decent battery performance that i think is going to be comparable to the note 4 the only thing about it is that it is a non-removable so you can't lift off the back like you can do in the note 4 and replace it as you go along which a lot of people do like about the samsung phones one of the reasons why they get them in the first place but in terms of exact battery performance again we're going to have to take a look at the m9 in real life break it in and then after a couple of days we'll give you an accurate measurement of how long the m9 lasts on one charge compared to the note 4. But on that, guys, that's really it. Now, keep in mind that this was just a basic comparison differences between the Samsung Note 4 and the HTC One M9. When the M9 becomes available to us, we'll definitely have a full hands-on comparison. So definitely uh, check back to the channel for that. Make sure you're subscribed uh, for all of our latest smartphone comparisons and reviews. And uh, thank you so much for your support. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you later. Take care.